In our house, maybe you're, this is like your house, we're watching this series, 1883. Anybody watching this? Uh, it's the origin story to the series that's been out like five seasons, Yellowstone, with Kevin Costner, right? That's that. That's the modern day uh, of the origin of 1883. By the way, this is a commercial. It's a great series to watch, 1883. I, I would recommend it. This is not sponsored by that series, but this is, I would recommend it. Now, origin stories have been around for a long time. We've seen in there is the theaters are full of them. I had the Iron Man origin story uh, was in the theaters. You've got, before that, decades ago, you had Superman, right? We, the origin story of Superman is what? The planet, I don't remember the planet. What's the planet called? Krypton. What's it called? Krypton. Krypton, with kryptonite, which is his Achilles heel, you gotta stay away from kryptonite. But we know that because we know Superman's origin story, right? There's origin stories for everything. And so is there an origin story, this is my question, for wisdom? I mean, where does it come from? We live with it every day. We use it sometimes consciously and sometimes subconsciously, but it's around us and in us at all times. Where does it come from? What does the Bible have to say about wisdom? And where does, does the Bible talk about an origin to wisdom? If so, does that even matter? So what? Well, it does matter because it's, uh, if it's a place or more importantly, a person uh, that's around that we can draw from, that behooves us as wise people to go back to the source on a regular basis. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's just help us unpack just wisdom in general. Like, what is it? What is wisdom? Is wisdom knowledge? No. It's not necessarily knowledge, because you can have, I've known people, and maybe you have as well, that are really intelligent, have a number of degrees, but incredibly foolish, right? Or make really bad decisions. On the other side, you might have somebody who has a limited education, or uh, whatever that education level is, not as smart as this person, but they're incredibly wise. And we love the either one. But so it doesn't matter the level of knowledge to have wisdom, but wisdom is, but wisdom is linked to knowledge because wisdom is a, what I call applied knowledge. You're, you're applying something. But it's not just knowledge or lack thereof. Uh, it's also experience. Like, our lived experience helps us gain more wisdom. So the equation might be this, knowledge plus experience, and we might stop there, and let me ask you this, is Google wise? Why or why not? Why do you think, why would you say or why not Google wise? Because it has a lot of knowledge to it, right? There's a lot of collected knowledge to, to, to Google. And there's experience of users that's drawing on. It's way beyond my ability to unpack how that works, but that's, that is how it works, I think. But it's not wise. It, it, but you can type in, how do I smoke a brisket? And it's going to give you some of the best answers. So it's going to lead you to the wisest way forward, but it's based on knowledge and experience. But here's why I think Google is not necessarily wise, like a human being is wise, because what's missing is grace and love and faith, right? So part of our human decision-making uh, way is we have knowledge, we have a lived experience, and as people of God in Christ, we're filled with grace and love and faith, which affects the decisions we make too, right? It's going to make, uh, make us, those three things, just grace, faith, and love divinely given to us, are going to help us make that situation that we're experiencing, navigate it with some knowledge as well. We're going to mix all that together. So if that's true, like knowledge, experience, grace, love, and faith, if that's true, Maybe we even say that Jesus himself is wisdom. Matter of fact, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Paul says, he writes to the church, he says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. 
So Paul, in the first century, is saying that Jesus is not just the power of God manifest, showing up on the earth, doing healing and miracles and so many things, and risen from the dead. He is all those things. He is the Savior of the world, and He is the personified wisdom of God. Because Jesus would be incredibly knowledgeable, full of experience from the beginning of time, because John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, was, was, was God, right? He's saying Jesus is the Word of God. It's a philosophical concept, which it's a longer conversation, but essentially it's like the holding, the concept that holds all things together. That's a Greek philosophical concept before Christianity. John is saying Jesus is that. So if the Word's in the beginning, Jesus is the Word, Jesus is also the personified wisdom that has all this experience and even John said, Jesus is full of grace and truth. We've received grace upon grace from him. So we might say that Jesus is the source of all wisdom. He is the personified one. If you look at the Old Testament book of, of Proverbs, Proverbs, uh, in the first few chapters of Proverbs, um, personifies wisdom as if it's a person. I mean, that was written thousands of years before Jesus. Uh, and yet the writer of, of, of Proverbs is maybe, meta, maybe foreshadowing the coming of Christ by personifying wisdom as a person. So even biblical Old Testament does that. And then you have Jesus himself as the personified wisdom of God. That's good news for us. That's incredibly good news for us. Because that being true, the one who rose from the dead, who is with us today and every day of our lives, every moment of our lives, that source of biblical, the, the source of pure wisdom is available to all of us at any time for any situation. And Christ is freely generous with wisdom. We ask, we receive. God help us navigate the experience of the life that we're living today. So if that and that, that being said, Jesus is a source of wisdom, we also recognize that there's other places where you find wisdom. So in the Old Testament, in the, not the Old Testament, in the Bible itself, there are specific books in the Bible that are considered wisdom literature. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, um, even the book of Job is considered wisdom literature. Do you know that? And why would it be wisdom literature, the book of Job? Because what Job is trying to say is suffering happens. Here's how to navigate the darkest times. Go from Job's exper lived experience and let Job and the wisdom that Job gained through that experience help us navigate those deep, deep times, those dark times. That's the wisdom of Job. But you've also got, in the New Testament, the book of James. The book of James is considered wisdom literature to help us with our lives, practically speaking. So we've got those five books in the Bible we can access from, and that himself that is God himself, because God says, my word is alive and active, and God speaks to us through his word. So God, God's Christ personified wisdom, yes, we can pray about that, but we can also go to the source that is the scriptures that God inspired himself to draw wisdom from for our lives. You know, it's also in baptism, when somebody's baptized here, we pray a prayer after they're baptized over a person. We mark them with the cross of Christ, and we say, you're marked the Christ of Christ, cross of Christ forever, filled with the Holy Spirit, and then we pray a prayer. Do you know what part of that prayer is? It comes from the Old Testament. We pray that that person is filled with wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. But it's inter interesting, even in baptism, we're praying that somebody's filled, that person is filled with wisdom. And that's good news again for us. As baptized people of God, we can trust that God's answered that prayer. God has filled us with himself. And if we have Christ himself in us, we have wisdom within us to help us in our daily decisions. So wisdom's source is Christ himself. 
We have the scriptures as a source of wisdom. We are filled with the Spirit of God in our baptism and given that gift of wisdom. And what's interesting is, I was, as I was preparing for this, I thought about the creation story, and I thought about where does wisdom show up in the creation story, in Genesis 1, 2, and 3. So if, is, if the origin of wisdom is Christ, and Christ is in the beginning, as John says, and we recognize that's the truth, um, but where does it show up? Let me ask you this. Is, is wisdom a created thing or not a created thing? I mean, creation, the origin story of the, of the universe is chapters 1, 2, and 3 of Genesis, right, of the earth. Is wisdom created within that? And I thought, no, it's not, it doesn't show up there. What's under, it's underneath it. Because God is the source of wisdom. So God is being all wisdom, is harnessing wisdom to create the world. Because he needed, doesn't need to create wisdom because that means wisdom didn't exist. But if God is wisdom, God used wisdom to do that. And it makes sense because you look at the creation story, what days one through seven, there's a, a wise order to them of how it all came to be. Like you get to day six, you have human beings. You can't put human beings on day two. There's not enough there for them to live by. But for them to get to day six, you've got to have this and then this and then this. It's a wise ordering. Underneath it all is wisdom. And then in it all is wisdom because God is present there. Now, here's the thing. If you look at Genesis chapter 3, it talks about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And as I was looking at that, um, I discovered that in the first centuries of the, of the church, the early Christian theologians called that tree, that is the tree that Adam and Eve ate from, the early Christian theologians called that tree the tree of wisdom. Isn't that interesting? And what if that's true? What if it's, we call it the tree of wisdom, that God put in the garden a tree called wisdom and that Adam and Eve were tempted to draw life from. And the, the, the serpent said, are you you're supposed to, like, no, you're not allowed to eat all that? I mean, is God trying to hold something back from you? Or did God say and me just caused a lot of doubts in them? And then they ate and then the rest is history. But is the serpent right? I mean, is God holding wisdom back from us? By putting a tree in the middle of the garden called wisdom? If God is the source of wisdom that created this wisdom and now we're not allowed to have it, is that, what's, the, what's this all about? Here's my humble theological opinion as a, uh, a pastor. So take it for what it's worth. There's a lot of ways we can unpack that, that moment where that tree's there and Adam and Eve are hanging around it, even though they had all that space to walk around in all the creation, if they hung around this one tree, the tree of wisdom, as if maybe wisdom is that important. If God is a source of wisdom, why would they even need to eat from the tree in the first place? Right? They already have it. They have a relationship with a God who loves them. They have a relationship with God who gives them wisdom freely. They don't need to go to a tree. They don't need, they don't need to go to a secondary source for something that they already have. And the temptation is to that. Isn't that true for our lives too? That sometimes we look for other places for the best way to do something where God's like, I can just tell you straight up. I think I got the knowledge and the experience and the divine grace and knowledge, grace and peace to, and the faith and love to help you with that. But we go to those places where we think we, that's going to give us that and it doesn't. And maybe that's the fault of human beings that Adam and Eve fell into and that we all fall into. They, they settle for something second best when they had it all the time in the first place. They didn't need it. We have a source that is available to us 24-7. Now, let me back up and just say two things before we finish up here. When Solomon became king of Israel, in, it's in recorded in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, 
the Old Testament. David, David is Solomon's dad. Solomon becomes king. Do you remember what Solomon asked for, first and foremost? He asked for wisdom. God says to Solomon, Get Solomon, you can ask for anything you want. What do you want? You're the king. And Solomon says, yeah, I can ask for anything I want, and I'm going to ask for wisdom because I want to lead well. And metaphorically speaking, in the Hebrew, it says that Solomon asks for a heart with ears. A heart with ears. That the wise one, the wise among us, those who seek wisdom from the Lord, has a heart that has ears on it. Because wisdom comes from here, not just up, up here. And what if in 2022 that we are people like Solomon, we're asking just for that, to navigate this year. Give me a heart with ears, God. I want to hear you. I want to I hear everything you have to say to help me navigate the lived experience today in my life. A heart with ears. We are determined that 35,000 decisions are made every day by human beings. Psychologists have estimated that, right? And those are decisions that are small decisions up to big decisions, minor to major. If you played it out over 365 days, it's 12 million 775,000 decisions every year. Okay, so you've already made 35,000 yesterday. So subtract that from 12 million 775,000. There's a, a lot of decisions you and I are going to make this next year. What if we just all commit ourselves to seeking wisdom from the, the Lord who loves us? Lord, give us hearts with ears to hear you so that these decisions we make are aligned with you, are part of what you're trying to do in this world, and together we'll become, move forward in, in a wisdom that the world might look at it as foolishness, but it is the wise way forward because God's ordered it that way. Let me just end with this um, sonnet. It's a prayer. Uh, by Malcolm Geit, who's an Anglican priest in England. And it's called O Sapientia. Sapientia is the Latin word for wisdom. Uh, let us pray. I cannot think unless I have been thought, nor can I speak unless I have been spoken. I cannot teach except as I am taught, or break the bread except as I am broken. O mind behind the mind through which I seek. O light within the light by which I see. O word beneath the words with which I speak. O founding unfound wisdom finding me. O sounding song whose depth is sounding me. O memory of time reminding me. My ground of being always grounding me. My maker's bounding line defining me. Come, hidden wisdom. Come with all you bring. Come to us now, disguised as everything.